Let's start with sharp calls. It is funny how there's some weeks where I get never ending calls and there's other weeks like this week where I'm getting calls, but it's not like last week. I felt like last week we had like six games I had professionals really in on. This week's a little different. And then just this morning, this is even a sharp call. We didn't touch on our last show, Antonio Brown, the whole thing. He showed his text this morning and his text showed Arians, his head coach, saying they're not resting. They're playing everyone. So it sounds like my information about Carolina is no good. I still see the line coming down. I've seen it now at seven and a half at some books, seven at other books. I don't know. That text, it's from the head coach. AB's putting it out there and the coach is literally saying in the text, we're not resting, guys. We're playing. Scary. Scary because I, I really like that Carolina position. I thought that was a smart play. We have a banged up Tampa Bay team. Why would they not take the week off, try to get healthy, get right, head into the playoffs? But I don't know. If we're going off his text and Coach Bruce saying, we're all playing, we're not resting, guys. I don't know. I'm still on Carolina. It just kind of muffled that. And, again, I had other guys calling today, like not today, yesterday, saying they like Carolina. They thought it was still a good number at seven and a half. I'm just looking at my phone right now. It's back up to eight at certain books. So it's going to be interesting following that line. I'm still on it. I'm still on Carolina. It's just like we literally just heard there's no more rumors. There's no more birds chirping. It's literally from the coach's mouth via text message to a player that was on the team. We're not resting. So what would you do, Chad? Would you just keep playing it out and see how it goes on that one? I don't know really know what to do with the position. Yeah, my opinion, we stay on the Panthers. It's been a really interesting. The fact that this number sort of moved down to seven and a half, even when we continue to see money and bets coming in on, on the Bucks is interesting to me. So uh, my sense is that some very big money, some kind of syndicate did come out of the Panthers. Yeah, because they were getting the same info as me, though. That's why I'm like, I'm worried now because it it just came out these texts these morning. So it's like, I understood the movement because betting pros were like hearing what I was hearing. That's why I was just saying, like, I'm with you. I'm just gonna hold my position. But it does make it a little scary when you see those texts from AB. It's like literally the head coach saying, we're not resting, we're playing. Well, right. So we can always buy out live. Yeah. Or like before, I, I can't see the line moving that much from what it is. Like we got it at eight. It's down to seven and a half. It's back up to eight at some books. You could buy it if yeah. you wanted. So a couple other calls. We were dead on with our Cleveland take. We said people just take the points with Cleveland. They're plus three at the time. A couple pros. That's what they really liked. Now it's moved so much. There's no value there anymore. It's up to six now for Cincy. So if I had to pick a side, I'd take Cincy now. You're getting six points back up versus back up. I'll take that six with the Bengals on the road. No real feel for it, though. So the, the value was on that Cleveland at the three. Not much value now. The one I kept hearing from the pros about was the Dolphins. We got a lot of heat for my New England take. All right, I get it. New England, no matter what, they're going to be the seventh seed. They could lose, and they're still going to, no matter what, make the playoffs. Doesn't change my feel about this Miami number. That was too big at seven. I still think it's too big at six and a half for – I don't see Miami quitting. They can still – technically, if things a bunch of things have to happen for them to make it, and it's like – a one out of a hundred chance they do make it. They don't seem like a team that's going to quit on Flores. Like he had them playing hard. They were one and seven. They turned their whole season around. Yeah. They let a letdown last week. We talked about that was predictable. That letdown game. It's really hard to win eight straight games. All like that's really, really hard to do. So from a bounce back perspective, nothing's really changed. The fact that I've heard some other professionals now saying they're coming in on the dolphins Woke up this morning, I saw the line and moved down to six and a half despite all the money, all the tickets coming in on the Dolphins. Talked to a bookmaker yesterday in Philadelphia. He said one of the biggest tease teams this week is New England. This is what people are going to be doing. They're going to be looking at, like we talked about, the playoff matchups. New England needs this game. Again, they don't need it to make the playoffs, but they need it for seeding. They, it depends on the seeding, what they get with this. So I already like the Dolphins, but now I've heard how many pros were on it. I wish I could have made it my screech roulette bet because it feels I feel way better about the Dolphins than I do about Atlanta. Another game we can get to, that's a pros versus shows game. The pros have come in. The money is coming on Atlanta despite Pitts being out. Pitts is out now for Atlanta. That's a big deal. I was interested to hear your take on that just because what do they have left? I know they got Cordell Patterson, but man, down Ridley, down Pitts on offense. I know the Saints don't have anything either, but like, Maybe that's one where I'll just be bigger on the under than, than picking a side. But I still like Atlanta with the points. But that, that made me feel like shit, seeing that Pitts is out. Is that official? Was he officially out? It's not official, but it's like when Schefter, like the way Schefter talks, it's like he's not practicing this week. It's so rare for guys that aren't practicing to come in if they have a serious injury in the last week of the season. Like they're looking at it like, what's the point of risking it that he has to get surgery in the offseason? Why don't we just take it easy on the kid? 
So that, I guess that's the only thing I'm wondering is he's 58 yards away from setting the single, the rookie season receiving yards record yep. for a tight end. I know. And like, there's a bunch of little things like that where it's like, I wanted to bet his prop. Luckily, they don't hang their props early in the week because I would have lost money on that. Like, I would have been all over yeah. his prop. I still think you're getting a good number, the Atlanta. I've heard other professionals like it. Saw it drop down to four. This morning, it's right back up to four and a half. So, I think it was a pros versus shows game. Now, pro money is coming on the Saints as well because and this is what we'll see throughout this whole final week. The Saints are playing for more. They're playing for a possibility of being in the playoffs. Obviously, a big deal for that team with all the injuries they've had. The year after Drew Brees... They, like Tennessee, were one of the most banged-up teams this year, the Saints. I mean, no team has had more injuries. They went from Jameis to Taysom Hill to, S- to Simeon back to Taysom Hill. It's just – it's been a crazy year for that Saints team. So, I'm still looking at this and trying to have a clear mind saying to myself, that's a lot of points for a home team in Atlanta playing against a team of the Saints that's not that good. Both these teams aren't that good, but it's a divisional game. You're still giving me four and a half with Atlanta at home. I'm still going to be on it. So it was interesting hearing other pros say that's a game they really liked as well. The last one, well, I guess we have two, two more that, that I really stuck out. The lines move, though. We, we talked, we liked Minnesota at minus two and a half. We said we wouldn't take it now just in case Kirk came back. That's a game the pros were all over. Kirk got cleared. The line's up to four. It's up to four and a half at some books. I still would take it, but it, obviously we liked it way better at two and a half, three. So it's still a good number against a Bears team, but. I feel like you touched on our last show, Chad. They're just, it feels like they're two teams going different directions. Like the Bears have been playing well these last couple of weeks where Minnesota just has not. And in a close matchup, now that we're above three, I might start looking at taking the Bears, but it's hard to say just because I did bet the Vikings at two and a half and I don't, I don't feel great about betting Andy Dalton on the road. Dude, this is a pass. Pass. This is a week 18 cluster, no value. Don't watch it. Ignore it if you're a Bears fan. Start thinking about next year. 